I'm in my gibbies, shibbies. If you guys are just joining me, it's a survival challenge. And in a survival challenge, <laughs> we've been a lot, well, wilderness living, not survival. It's different. I woke up, I had a, a tick crawling up my ear. Yeah, there it is. I think you guys can see that. And Turkey's been so far been the elusive one. So we did a setup yesterday. We got the blind all set out. Everything's ready to go. We have birds. We roosted birds last night, uh, put them to bed. They were out in the field. There was four hens and one gobbler up in the tree. Uh, not in the tree, but they were near a tree, 30 or 40 yards from our blind. So I'm presuming they're gonna roost up in that tree that they were next to, which is perfect. That'll be about 40 or 50 yards from the corner where we set up. But I know they go to the back and the front and they spend a lot of time in that field there. I wanna be settled into the ground blind by 3.30, which is exactly a half an hour from now. Everything for turkey hunting happens in the morning. Um, if, you're, if you're a turkey hunter, you already know this, but if you're a survival person, like most of the people that watch my channel, you probably don't know this. Everything in turkey hunting happens in the morning. If you miss the morning, you're screwed and you ruined your day. So I don't wanna ruin my hunt. I wanna make sure that we're all ready to go. So I'm gonna throw my, my clothes on, run out to the car, get dressed and kinda of get Zach on board with this plan i think we're, i think we're on par because zach's not mm, he's not not much of a hunter not as much as me anyway i've done a lot more hunting than he has i got my asac camel if you guys want a discount on asac camel go to asaccamel.com and type in uh on the promo code woodbeard you'll get 10 percent off helps me helps you uh, the decoys, I got a hen decoy, I got my Hidden Woodsman uh, bag, he's making a promo for us. So you guys like that Hidden hidden Woodsman bag? Hopefully by the time you guys see this we got something roughly hashed out, we're going to make a, a hunting type bag, day back. Um, yeah, I'm set to go. We got uh, a few minutes before we got to settle in. So, I think Zach's almost ready. He's getting geared up. Gamble up, buddy, gamble up. Yep. Let's get it. <laughs> all right, we're all locked up. Zach's locked up, we're locked in. Got stuff in my face, of course, always. I'm living in the bush, trying to live off bush, bush grub. This is gonna be a rocking morning. You guys are, you guys are gonna hear the full turkey woods, man. It's gonna light up. Man, <laughs> that was freaking crazy. Oh. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> oh man, that played out like the most perfect turkey hunt ever. 
worked up, called a couple, just light, light calling. That came in <laughs> slow and steady, but on a rope. And then just as I was getting the gun lined up, try to get it out the shoot window, the uh, bird started acting up <laughs> and he started doing a nope. He's gonna do a nope on me. I'm like, no, 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 you're not doing a nope on me. So I lined her up, knocked it down. It was perfect shot, like perfectly clean shot. That gun uh, I borrowed from Chris, so thank you for letting me borrow it. That thing is spot on, man. It shoots darts. We got a nice gobbler, nice... It's got a, what, an eight inch beard on it or something like that? I don't do beards. <laughs> we don't do beards here, do we? Got some quarter inch spurs. Maybe, yeah. Three quarter, half, half, half inch, maybe. This is a survival bird. Like, <laughs> we are doing season five of the Willis Living Challenge, and this is our food. This is survival food for us. We're doing a modern hunting gathering. We weighed ourselves six days ago, and at the end, we're gonna weigh ourselves again. If we lose any weight whatsoever, only eating only wild food, we lose the challenge. You guys know that. Go back to start, watch the whole series, find out how we got to this moment right here where we got ourselves a freaking turkey <laughs> in the springtime in Maine. Oh, that was a rush. Oh, I'm so glad I did that. That's the first turkey I've ever shot. It's not the first turkey I've ever called. Uh, I've called a lot of turkeys in my life, but I've always bow hunted them, so I've never had that range. So <laughs> I took full advantage of it this time. Whew. That bird's gonna eat well. We're throwing that bird. What are we gonna do with that bird? Spit it up and everything? Smoke and roast it. Ja uh, Zach, I'm with Zach Fowler. Um, he has got an idea for how to cook this thing up primitively. He, he's done a turkey or a chicken before. Turkey before, a chick turkey, a turkey. Uh, I don't think it was a wild one, was it? Domes domesticate one, whatever. Um, so he's got a method to do that. So I'm pretty much gonna pass it over to him. He's gonna take over from now. I think I've done my job. I will help, obviously, but <laughs> Zach's expertise is going to be the bushcraft stuff. Oh man, we got to get this thing tagged up. That's nice to get a whole whack of meat. <laughs> That's a good way. There's a lot of bird there. Yeah, dude. Holy cow. <laughs> thanks for um, thanks for scouting this out. Yeah, it wouldn't have happened unless uh, Zach secured permission, kind of last minute um from the owner here just driving by seeing turkeys here all the time we saw four hens last night and a gobbler and they were over here so we set up for them that's why i had the decoy over here facing this way because we figured they'd pitch down into the field here and then come across and the hens facing that way and when i heard the gobbler over there i ran out and i turned it so she <laughs> the hen right there she was facing that way so when the gobbler came up he would he would want to come up sort of behind her and then so he could see her and then he kind of worked back this way. So it pretty much played out perfectly. I'm super happy, if you can't tell. It was <laughs> muggy warm like it was yesterday and all of a sudden it just, oh. it dropped and blew in some cool. Yeah, the wind picked up. So it, it's gonna be a cold front now, I think. But uh, yeah, all right, let's get this thing, let's get this thing fired up. Let's get it on the Barbie and eat it. <laughs> this rack's working out pretty good. <laughs> we got the tag out. He's got to get a piece of string. Don't worry. <laughs> it just seems so funny to, to throw it under some cargo netting. That's the quickest we've ever completed a food foraging adventure um, attempt in Maine. It's always been like a half a day to get that many calories, that much meat. So to get it done in like, I don't know, it's like 6 a.m. still. The sun, is, the sun isn't even up yet. Later on, we're going to check the trail camera and we're going to see 
if there's any more activity. I'm thinking that that gobbler is actually a different gobbler than the one we had scouted. There might be another opportunity for me to go out and get another bird. So what do you think? You guys want to see another catch and cook? Because I, I, I would like to do one. Maybe we'll keep it up for later. I just swallowed, I just swallowed a black fly. I still lots of work to do before I can eat it. Might be cooking all day. All right, thankfully this time is a short ride. This is actually a spot that's oh, somewhat near. It's only like five minute drive from our camp. Probably a half an hour walk. Obviously, we've been living off grid for the majority of this seven day wilderness living challenge. It's been a huge learning curve for me, but we've been slowly and incrementally knocking it out of the park. We have had so many things on this adventure. If you're just joining us, you're a little late to, we ate some of these creatures here. In fact, there was so much, I couldn't even finish it last night. I'm gonna try to walk you through how I would do it. Um, dry pluck it obviously would be better if we did it uh, right away. It's going to be a little bit harder to do now, um, but it won't be impossible. You just have to work diligently. I'm not gonna pull down on the feathers. I'm gonna pull as the feathers um, naturally lie, kind of like plucking a hair. When you pluck your hair, you should pluck as they grow and they'll be easier to come out. So couple feathers at a time one swift motion black flies out here are crazy take all these feathers out see how quickly they go there'll be a couple of stubborn ones that'll break you can see how much of the bird we've already done so we're making our progress we're not even working that hard really all right, I'm gonna throw you guys back on the tripod so I can kind of use both hands again. It's a little tricky using my left hand and film with my right hand. You guys know how that goes, right? All right, I'll switch you over here. All right, so we got most of the front done. Let's switch over to the back. Remember guys, I'm doing this hungry. That's part of the Willis Live Challenge. It's like, this is the payoff for all the work that we do. We're feeding ourselves from the land. Now I do realize that I could boil a bunch of water, do a scald, but why would you when it's not that hard to remove the feathers? It's a lot less uh, mess, it's a lot less hassle. You just can't wait a long time before you do it because the feathers get more and more difficult as you wait. If you do this somewhere, make sure it's not in your backyard because these feathers will be around for a very long time. All right, I got most of the front done. I'm gonna turn it around and start working on the back. A lot of people like to keep the fan. I'd be tempted to keep it too. For this cook, we wanna have a whole bird. So I will be removing the tail feathers. I'll probably keep one as a memory, souvenir. Be killing my first turkey ever. As you can see, it's a little bit tedious behind the wings and then you really got to decide where you're going to stop. Normally people would just go to this knuckle and they wouldn't bother with this because this is going to be pretty chewy meat. We just cut it off here. I'm going to go the extra effort though and pluck all the way off including the wing feathers because I want it to cook properly on the fire and if I don't do it properly it won't have that integrity it won't have that complete shell so when it's being cooked it has the potential to for the skin to peel back and for it to burn in certain places so I want a nice tight shell to be able to cook the entire bird in all right we're getting there 
The last few feathers are pretty hard to pluck. They're the main feathers. They don't get shed very often. They're very expensive for the bird to make. So the bird hangs onto them. All right, I give up on the wings. I'm just gonna cut it off with the one knuckle. There's no more meat anyway. There we go, that's looking like a pretty clean bird. It's always a, a few strays, but those can be worked away. As we get closer to cooking, I'm going to uh, chop the wings off in a second because they are too stubborn for me to pull and also because there's no meat in the wing part anyway. Now all we have to do is remove the head. I'm just gonna use the ax and done. And then we can get the organs out. So I'm gonna take it off the tree and move it over to the bench and we'll keep working. If you want ASAC camo, go to asaccamo.com or whatever, look it up. And then when you do your purchase at the end, put in uh, promo code Woodbeard. You're gonna get, I think 10% off or something like that. And I'll also get a, receive a sponsorship out of it. So it helps me out, keeps my channel going, keeps me making content for you. All right, so the bird's up on the, we'll call it the dressing table. Uh, this part maybe makes the cut, I don't know. It depends how, what it looks like. I mean, if you cleaned any kind of animal, it's not any different. So we're gonna try to keep it, keep it kosher for most people. So let's uh, let's dive right in. All all we're gonna do, in case it doesn't make it into the cut, I'm just gonna cut around the uh, cavity. You know what a turkey looks like. You guys have all eaten turkey. Anyway, I'm gonna cut the cavity out, and then I'm gonna reach up in front there, and I'm gonna grab the neck stuff, and I'm gonna pull all that stuff out. Okay. So first cut is gonna be right here to free up the butthole. And then I feel like the soft tissue all up in here, the breastplate ends, so you can't cut through any of that. You guys know what a turkey looks like. So when you cut this out here, that's all going to come out. But if you don't separate that part first, it won't be able to go out. So we just opened the crop or gizzard. I don't know which one it is. <laughs> it's the grinder anyway. And there is uh, not a whole lot of interesting things in there. That looks like a twig. I don't know how it figured that was food, but it did. Mostly stones, but you will see here it's got um, dandelion flowers. So as we know um, from the Willis Living Challenge, the dandelions are edible, the leaves and the flowers. So obviously this bird enjoyed those. Um, I guess if it wasn't sitting on the roost all night, it might have had other things like bugs and, and things like that. I don't know, I'd say 15 pounds. Yeah. Conservatively, with nothing in it. This is 100% yeah. edible minus like mm -hmm. some bones. You wanna try it? No, just kidding. <laughs> it's more than 10. Yeah, it is. It's more than it 10. It is. It's definitely, uh, yeah, that's a 15 to 20. I yeah. mean. Quite lean though. Yes, it is. It's very different. So you see one at a, hold it up again. And you see one at a grocery store and I swear it's like, it has <laughs> at least that much more meat, like my hand size on each side of it. And fat too. Yeah. <laughs> These ones, uh. They're on the lean side. They're a wild animal, so they don't have all that fat that you want. It's just, like the skin's really thin. 
you know there's not gonna be a lot of fat to speak of it's gonna be mostly yeah, meat. in a store-bought bird you'd never see like their their breastbone like that it's all like plumped out right around it here because they're or even farm birds because they're just fed so well they don't have to fly up into trees to r run from predators or anything do they no not really all right so zach's gonna take over from here he's gonna take over for the cooking part i'm i think going to jump in and uh, uh clean up some of the clams so that we can eat them now uh this turkey's probably gonna take all day to cook so we got clams we got a couple lobsters am i missing anything zach is that everything oh fiddleheads and <laughs> cattails yeah, cattails <laughs> We got a few things to eat. So it's about time for brunch. Uh, brunch, lunch, breakfast. Whew, it's getting on in the day anyway. Food time. We uh, go, go, go every day. Seven days of the Wilderness Living Challenge. It's funny because I don't feel hungry right now, which is absolutely bizarre to me. I don't know why, because I haven't been eating all that much food. Um, I mean, no, scratch that. We've been eating a lot of food. It's just not regular enough. All right, it was good to get all those done. Now we can mosey on back up to the fire, which should be good and ready, full of coals. And we can have ourselves a snack while we wait for that turkey. That turkey is going to take a quite a while to complete, but man, is it gonna be delicious when it's done. There we go. And then boom, it's right apart. go Turkey's on. So the clams are about ready. They're ready to munch on. We can just devour them now. There's no sand. Well, I'm not gonna guarantee there's no sand or grit because it's probably sand and grit. 
um, but they're readier to eat. We just have to eat gingerly. We've been like, if you bite down, you might bite down on a piece of gravel and wear your enamel out and then you're gonna get a cavity when you're 97 years old. No, sooner. But uh, you know, primitive people and why their teeth are all rotted out because they use mortar pestles with, um, well, they don't brush your teeth. <laughs> That's probably the main reason. But they, um, if they use like a, a, a stone grinder, a lot of the stone gets in the, or stored in mortar pestle, a lot of the stone gets in the food. Anyway, and then you chew down on it. I don't know, I probably wore out some of my enamel already. Um, anyway, they're ready to go. Zach's uh, got the chicken turkey on the fire. He's got it wrapped up, he's got it spitted. Uh, he's got a rig set up, it looks really cool. Dinner served, I mean brunch is served. Ready? Ooh, Ooh. yeah. Mmm. Ah. I uh, put some... Uh, would you say one shell for a spoon? Spoon. That's clever. I don't. We've been like, we don't <laughs> have any spoons because they use shells this whole time. I don't know. I don't feel hungry. It's the weirdest thing. Yeah, I don't either. I feel like I should be hungry, so I'm like so hungry that I'm not hungry. Could it be that we ate so much of the insides of the lobster, like the fat, we like totally over satiated ourselves or something? I feel like this part is good. Yeah, the the stomachs. But not the nozzle. And that's what we're gonna eat. I'm gonna eat as much as I can. We have two lobsters left. We actually have a crab too. We didn't even try. I haven't tried crab yet, so I think we should do that next. We'll probably cook up the lobster next, because if we don't, yeah, I mean, we gotta cook up those lobsters and crabs. Yeah. And then, um, oh, that's a big stone. You don't want a stone that big in your food in your teeth. That's not good. Not happening. I'm gonna get through two helpings because I know I gotta eat. I'm feeling my energy flagging a little bit this morning. I suppose my appetite. I'm not sure if it's getting up at three after five hours of sleep or lack of food. Hit the wall. Open! It's when you can't swallow it. You just chew and chew and chew and chew. That's the fish wall, man. I don't know, clams are stronger. Yeah, they hit you hard. Ugh. It's not an everyday food. Nope. Pity the people that ate it every day on the beach. I mean, maybe with butter and fresh every day and I don't pity, they probably, they didn't know any better. They didn't have they, any They knew better. a season of eating clams <laughs> and shucking oysters and, and smoking food and eating it like that. And then a season of deer hunting and eating deer and making jerky and eating that. And I remember a season of berries, it was, you know, we moved around. I'm done, that's it. I guess I get to be the last man standing on this one. <laughs> I'm gonna eat a couple more anyway. I'm not as, not as bad off as Zach. I'll cook the, the gizzard next, I'll put it on a stick. I think that would be good. It's log, it's log, it's big, it's heavy, it's wood. Don't you be my neighbor. I've always wanted to have a neighbor just like you. So you want to put some adobo spice on here first. Get a little bit of meat, meat. Oh, I got the liver too. That should be a change of flavor. We're both having problems eating the seafood buffet that never ends. Kind of looks more like red meat. I think that's a little bit more palatable right now. Check these fish out since you're awake. Mm. We could eat these too. 
to our, our river herring. Probably a good representation of what it was like to live in primitive times. But they would have this smokehouse littered all the way to the top. Oh, the best way to get it off here. Yeah, just like that. There you go. No snack, ready to go. Even though it's been scored, it hasn't been hot enough to actually cook it. We'll toss that in the fire. That'll be a snack too. Oh, that's hot. That won't take long. There's a lot of little pin bones that stay in. It's all in there. A row, extra row. That's not in a regular fish. You can eat it. All right, I'm almost done the crop and liver on the rock. So I'll have that for a snack. All right, I got the crop or gizzard or whatever the heck it is. You guys correct me. I hope it's cooked. It's been cooking. It's been on there for a long time. That's really good. Not sure what Zach meant by having it be chewy. Because this is most certainly not chewy. It tastes like a turkey smells. <laughs> but it's actually really good. It's a really pleasant change of pace. What if that's the heart? I don't know which is the heart and which is the gizzard anymore. They all look the same. Save that one there because I want to try some of these other pieces, which I think five second rule. Right, that's got to be the heart. Going from clam to lobster to like a red meat flavor. So that's got to be the, it's just having a var different variety of things. I'm not just eating the same old thing over and over again. I mean, you can do it. Do you want to do it? I don't know. Probably most people don't. Yeah. I'm not sure which is which. One's heart and one's the gizzard crop or whatever. So you said one of them was chewy. Like, one of them is chewy. But I, I have to guess which is which? Yeah, I don't know. I, well, you'll figure it out. It's so like meat. <laughs> meat. It's, n it's so not fish. No, I I'm know. Now I'm like, my appetite's like all of a sudden just like, <laughs> woo! I can't wait to eat that turkey. Smoked turkey livers. In survival. It's funny, I got the livers off. Zach looks over like it's a big marshmallow. <laughs> little raccoon. Take one. <laughs> or two. Or you can have you can have all these if you want. I kinda I kinda had the same meat um impulse you did when I you started eating it. Mm. I couldn't really stop. But I'm like I should probably save two for Zach. <laughs> it was so good though. Mm. A hard to stop. There we go, shove it under there. Oh yeah, there we there go. There we go. <laughs> it's getting crowded under there. You got room for a lobster? All right, in the pot she goes. So decided we need some greens in my life. So I put the fiddleheads on. The fiddleheads, a lot of people say you gotta do like two changes of water. I don't know. I don't know if you do or not. I've heard it both ways. I've researched it and that's what people said because sometimes they, people get sick from it. This is the right one to eat. It's got a V notch. It's called the ostrich fern fiddlehead. Oh yeah, it's firming up nicely. It's getting there. Of course, every once in a while we don't pay attention and that's what happens, but oh well, it'll eat all the same. Put some butter on that, we'll be all set. <laughs> what butter, you holding out on me? All right, second change of water here. I already did one. Second one, we'll just let this come to a boil because it's creek water. And then uh, we can eat it with butter. No, we can't. Is that safe? Yeah, sure. All right, let me see it. People, you haven't seen people do this before? It's like no. it's like golfing. Ready? Yeah, yeah. Four! That's how that works. Let's grab one out and we'll, without burning ourselves, one, two, three. There we go, we got it. These are hot. And quite good. You know, if you had to compare it to something, I would say right now these taste like green giant French style green beans without the French style seasoning or whatever the heck they put in it. It's got that texture. Very good. That works good. Like butter. <laughs> Did you see that? I cut into it and it was like poof. So Zach is in the process right now of splitting the bird in two. 
Um, there's a word for it and I forget what it's called. It's like, like splatch locking, splatch locking or something. Anyway, you guys can maybe figure it out. We're gonna cut it in two and we're gonna put it on a green something something. Anyway, Zach built this whole thing and he's gonna basically cook both halves separately or yeah, separately from each other so that it cooks faster. Anyway, you'll see. Wow, that does not look pleasant. I'm sure to you guys. You can see already what we cooked. This is looking pretty close to cooked meat, but it's also, if you feel it with your finger, it's a lot soft, still quite a bit soft. So, still a ways to go. <laughs> Just doing a little housekeeping. Housekeeping! Housekeeping! You need me to wash your towels? <laughs> housekeeping! You need fresh towel? Nothing, y'all. I don't know why I'm a woman, too. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> I changed your sheet? <laughs> no, thank you. Come back later. I, I'm busy. I change your toilet paper. We're civilized. We gotta sit up to the table. Not like savages on the dirt. I almost put it on the other side, but uh, I put it on this side so I was like, we'd be filming in this direction. You wanna see the shelter and all the pretty. But then I realized too, it was like sitting here and looking towards the fire. It's nice. I don't do all this makery stuff, but I sure do appreciate it when I get to enjoy the rewards of it so we're gonna check our turkey it's been cooking all day long i'm hoping it's done because i'm hungry again still got a little bit of juice in there that's what you want touching that it's firm but not bouncy you know you guys know when a turkey's done you stick the thermometer in it except we don't have a thermometer here we just have to guess but if that leg pops off which i know if i pull it any harder it's probably going to come right off oh yeah that looks darn good. We're going to add some adobo spice. You can buy that on Zach Fowler's website. That's a joint partnership. We'll be adding adobo onto our goose. Stand up, adobo. Stand up. There you go. Stay there. A big test to see if this leg comes off oh yeah listen to that popping slice in there that meat looks pretty darn good to me that looks pretty good doesn't it it's a good sign when there's still moisture coming out of the meat it is juicy but a little chewy Chopsticks. Nice. They're special chopsticks. See that? They're stuck together still. They're training wheel chopsticks for people that don't know how to use chopsticks. <laughs> Are you implying I don't know how to use chopsticks? I thought you said you didn't. Um, I don't think I ever said I didn't. I oh. can. I can. I Maybe that was somebody else then. All right, never what, mind. What do you mean? I thought I had. Some, I thought I was gonna introduce you to something new, like, but, yeah. Like chopsticks? Yeah. Um, well, because you would know I've I used them before, but I don't prefer them. Oh, okay. But that oh. those are pretty cool. They get them to bend correctly. They want to twist. It kind of it works better if you just grab them like a fist. Like like this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, or the other way around, but yeah. Because then you can control how they come together. Right. I did that with the. Uh, that looks good. Trail life kids the other day. They had so much fun because all of a sudden they were like able to make bushcraft chopsticks and we did like a whole bunch of competitions like picking up stones and running with them and setting them onto a bench. 
Zach is like a big kid in many ways. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Not in a bad way. Yeah. That's the mischief side of my channel. The slingshot shooting and the doing silly stuff. Look at that. That's like nice and moist. It's got a good texture. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful meat. Oh, you could, that's, that's turkey sandwich material right there. This breast meat is freaking awesome. Like that is perfect, perfect meat. Like that is better than I thought. Like the leg, yeah, 100% was chewy. The leg was 100% chewy. This is not chewy at all. That is nice and tender, and perfect. And we did nothing to this. We didn't add any oil, any spices until the end, nothing. That's impressive. I'm really impressed by that. The thigh meat's pretty good too. It's dark and it doesn't have anything in it, like stringy or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, so you're able to like shave off pieces and. We're gonna weigh out in a couple days. We got one more day tomorrow, one more full day. We sleep and then we weigh out the next day. So if we lose any weight at all, we lose the challenge officially. This is about thriving, not about just surviving. Because I think just surviving seven days would be probably fairly easy unless you were on like. Mount Everest or the Arctic. We could have gotten the alewives, smoked them, and just laid <laughs> just around. Laid, just lay there. Laid around and like, yeah. walk, you know. There's no challenge to that. This is really about, the challenge is really about maintaining a standard of living, being active and still having a life. So I'll catch you guys on the next video.